This video is on scientific measurement. As we will see in our measurements, every single measurement has error. In other words, it is impossible to get a perfect measurement. Regardless of how expensive the measuring instrument is, there is no such thing as a perfect measurement. The reason why that is, is every measurement always includes an estimated digit. Every measurement has known digits, maybe just one known digit, maybe several known digits, and we'll explain what we mean by that in a second. Plus, the last digit is always estimated. These digits together, the known digits and the estimated digit, are known as significant figures, or sometimes uh, significant digits. Here is an example of what we mean by known and estimated digits. Let's say we're using this measuring device here at the bottom. And uh, we can see it's marked one, two, three. Let's say these are centimeters. As you can see, there are no units here. But let's say they're in centimeters. And we're trying to measure the length of something. And that something uh, ends right here between two and three. We know for sure that the length of this object is two point something. We can tell that because it's between two and three. So this measurement, two, that would be a known digit. The point five, we're estimating. When we look at this measuring device, what we're actually doing in our, in our head, we are subdividing this space between two and three into 10 equal parts. So as you're visualizing this, you're, you're separating into 10 equal parts and you're estimating that it's half the way between two and three. In other words, it's on the 0.5 mark that you would see in your head. So you record your measurement as 2.5, where the 0.5 is the estimated digit. Now, if we were measuring the same object, the length of that object with this measuring device that's here at the top, we're gonna get a different measurement because you'll notice it's marked differently. The smallest markings or the smallest graduations, it's not marked every whole centimeter, it's actually marked every tenth of a centimeter. So we can see we have 2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, etc. Now if we look at the length of this, we can see clearly that it is between 2.5 and 2.6. So we know for sure the length of this object is 2.5 something. So the 2.5, those first two digits, those are known digits. We're then estimating the next decimal place. What we do in our heads is we mentally try to divide this space between 2.5 and 2.6, divide that into 10 equal parts, and we estimate that it, here in this case, it's halfway between, so we say 2.55. Now a question that might come up at this point uh, would be, well, what if I look at this and I think, this line isn't quite halfway between. Could I say 2.54? Would that be a correct measurement? Absolutely, it would be. In fact, if you actually look at this line as I look at it here, um, it looks like this dotted line is actually a slightly, slightly closer to the 2.5 than the 2.6. So I might say 2.54, and that would be a good measurement. Here's another picture uh, that can show us how uh, a the markings on measuring devices can affect our measurement. Let's say this ruler or whatever this is up here at the top, this might be marked in decimeters, uh, decimeters, where one decimeter is a tenth of a meter. So we can see the zero marks here at the very end, and then it's only marked every one, and then two would be somewhere out here to the right. And so when we use this device, uh, we would only be able to record two digits, a, a known digit and an estimated digit. Uh, on this measuring device here, maybe this it's the same same length of, of device, but this is marked every centimeter, where there's 10 centimeters in a decimeter, as you can see here. Um, so we'd be able to record a very different measurement. Uh, and then here at the bottom, we have a ruler marked in millimeters, perhaps, where there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter or 100 millimeters in, in a decimeter. And notice this one is actually marked every tenth of a millimeter. Uh, excuse me, every whole millimeter, uh, where we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc., and we'd be able to record uh, that to uh, then the tenth of a millimeter because we can estimate that next digit. Whenever we measure, it requires an estimation 
of one decimal place beyond the smallest graduation. It's not something we do optionally if it's convenient. That's how measurements work. So for example, if we were to look at this picture, the first thing I want to identify is what are the markings on the device? In other words, the smallest increments, the smallest graduations, how big are they? Well, when I look at this, I can see that each of these smallest markings are one-tenth of a centimeter. This would be 11, 11.1, 11.2, 11.3, etc. So I know for sure that I can, uh, I can measure this to a tenth of a centimeter, known to known digits. That means I estimate the hundredth. So when I look at this object, I can see that it is somewhere between 11.6 and 11.7 centimeters. So it's 11.6 something. Now I'm gonna estimate that something. I'm gonna say it's 11.64 centimeters, where mentally I divide this space here between 11.6 and 11.7. I divide that into 10 parts, and I estimate that it's about 4 tenths of the way between those two, so 11.64 is the measurement I come up with. If you look at that and say, well, I think it's more 11.63, that would be appropriate. Maybe you think it's halfway between, you say 11.65. That would also be okay as well. Here's another example. Here we have a thermometer. You might not be able to tell that, um, but it is a thermometer, and we can see uh, that if this is marked every, well, I'll just ask you, what is this marked every, how many degrees Celsius this would be? Take a look at this. And if you say it's marked every whole degree Celsius, you would be correct. You can see here's the 80 mark. And we go 81, 82, 83, 84, etc., up to 90. So it's marked every whole degree Celsius. So that means we can estimate to the tenth of a, of a degree, to the next decimal place. When I look at this, I can see that we are definitely between 87 and 88 degrees Celsius. So that, those would be known digits. Now we need to estimate, and the part we would look at would be the very bottom of this dip, this curve in the, in the liquid level, that's called a meniscus. And when we look at that, you might estimate that it's halfway between, so in this case, I say 87.5 degrees Celsius. Again, if you look at that, and if you would say 87.4, that would be appropriate, 87.6 perhaps. Uh, anything outside of that, though, would not be a very good estimation. If you would start saying something like 87.2, uh, this, this liquid level is obviously more than two tenths of the way between the 87 and the 88 mark. So it's not just a quick guess of uh, these estimations. Sometimes that's confusing for students. It's not just a guess. You have to physically try to uh, subdivide this, this space into 10 equal parts and then make the best estimation possible. Uh, so there are good and bad estimations. There's not one correct estimation, though. Some questions that you should ask yourself whenever you are measuring anything. Is this the best measuring device or the best measuring instrument to use? In other words, is it going to measure it appropriately? Is the measuring instrument the right size? For example, if you're going to measure a very small volume of a liquid, you're not going to want to use a very large graduated cylinder. That wouldn't make any sense. What units am I measuring in? Uh, every measuring device is m marked with the units that it uses. You need to find them if you aren't sure what it's marked in so that you know. What do the markings on the device represent? Some measuring instruments are marked very clearly and it's very easy to tell what each of the marks means. Some of them are not marked very clearly. In fact, some of them are almost deceiving, uh, as you will see. So make sure when you're using a measuring device you know what all the marks mean. The two most important questions, or maybe the ones that you haven't thought about before, but you will need to now. What is the smallest graduation on the device? In other words, the smallest markings, how big is the increment between them? Is it every whole centimeter, for example? Is it every tenth of a degree Celsius? Uh, maybe it's only marked every 100 milliliters, uh, where 100 is the smallest graduation. And then from that answer, you should be able to answer this last question. How many decimal places should my measurement have? We know that we always estimate to one decimal place beyond the smallest graduation. So once you have answered this question, what is the smallest graduation? Say, it's, say a graduated cylinder is marked every 10 milliliters. Then the next decimal place would be the ones place. 
So this, the answer to this question, how many decimal places should my measurement have, we can record a measurement to the ones place. That's what we would estimate to. The last few slides here are simply pictures where you're going to record a measurement. So I'll, I'll put the picture up as you can see here. What, if I were you, I would pause the video. Try to take your own measurement. Ask, ask yourself those questions. What is the smallest graduation on the measuring device? How many decimal places should I have? And then record your measurement. And then uh, play the video so you can see if you were correct. On this device here, uh, this is some sort of pressure gauge. It's marked, uh, it's, uh, the unit's PSI, pounds per square inch. Uh, it is marked every tenth of a PSI. We can see this would be 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, etc., down to 5. It is somewhere between 4.3 and 4.4 PSI, so it's 4.3 something. Uh, here's where you need to estimate how far it is between 4.3 and 4.4. Uh, I would say 4.33 PSI. If you look at that and say 4.32 or 4.34, those would be good measurements as well. Uh, 4.31, not so good. Uh, the, the dial would definitely be much closer to 4.3. 4.35 wouldn't be very good. Uh, it, would be, it would be halfway between. Uh, so again, the estimations, while there isn't a correct estimation, there can be bad estimations. All right, here we have an object where we're measuring its length. Uh, now this measuring device here, you can't see any units. Uh, let's say they're in centimeters, probably be the best guess here. Uh, when I look at this, I can tell very clearly this is somewhere between 29.2 and 29.3 centimeters. Notice this is marked every tenth of a centimeter, 30, 30.1, 30.2, etc. So I can estimate to the hundredth of a centimeter. Uh, and when I look at that, uh, to me it looks like it's not quite halfway between 29.2 and 29.3. This particular picture is very difficult to tell. Uh, so the estimations are going to have a wider range. And that is the case with measuring devices. Uh, the, the, the harder it is to read uh, the, the measuring device, the more difficult it is to estimate. And you will experience that where some measuring devices, measuring instruments, they're very clearly marked and there's lots of space between the marks so it's easy to estimate. In this particular one, there's not very much space at all between the smallest markings. So it makes it difficult to estimate. And that will be the case when you actually measure. Here we have two different rulers, ruler A and ruler B. And let's say these are in centimeters. There's no, uh, there is no unit listed on here. So we should be able to take two measurements, one from ruler A, one from ruler B. When we look at ruler A, we can see that it is marked every whole centimeter, one, two, three, four, etc. So we can estimate to the next place, the tenths place. When I look at this, I can clearly see that the length of this object is more than halfway between four and five. Uh, so when I look at that, I would say about 4.8, maybe 4.7. Uh, looks like I've recorded 4.8 here. Again, if you look at that and say 4.7, you would not be incorrect. Uh, again, that estimation might be different. 4.9 would probably be too much. Uh, it would the uh, the object would definitely be closer to 5. 4.6 or 4.5 would definitely not be enough. If we use the different ruler, ruler B, for the same length of object, we can clearly see that we're going to get a different measurement. When I look at this, I can see that it is definitely between 4.8 and 4.9 centimeters. So my known digits here are 4.8. My estimated digit would be the next one. In this case, I say 4.83, where I'm estimating that we're somewhere about 3 tenths of the way between 4.8 and 4.9. And so I say 4.83. Again, 4.82, 4.84, those would be good measurements as well. All right, here we have another ruler that's marked in centimeters. And notice uh, this one is marked every tenth of a centimeter. This one is a little different. Sometimes this can be confusing for students because now all of a sudden we see the 0.5 and the 1.5 on here. Uh, if those had disappeared, if those weren't marked on here, uh, it would still be the same thing. It would be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.0. Uh, don't be confused. If uh, there are more numbers actually on the device than you might expect to see, you still need to find what the smallest marking is. Now, when I look at this, I'm going to say I'm measuring the very inner edge of this 
of this object, whatever this happens to be. Uh, so the inside of this very dark line. When I look at that, to me it is right on the 0.6 mark. It is perfectly on the 0.6. But if I just record my measurement as 0.6 centimeters, then I'm not estimating the correct digit. Because this is marked every tenth of a centimeter, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, etc. So I need to estimate to the hundredths. So when I record my measurement, I am going to record it as 0 0.60 centimeters. That is different than simply saying 0 0.6 centimeters. Now, uh, the value is the same, but it means something very different. If we were to just say 0 0.6 centimeters, what we're saying is it's somewhere between 0 and 1 centimeters we're estimating that it's six tenths of the way between them. 0 0.60 tells us we are not estimating the 0 0.6. We know it's 0 0.6 something. We're saying it's right on that 0 0.6 mark. So that is the difference. Here we have a picture of a graduated cylinder. And you can see here the water, or whatever this is, I don't know if it's actually water, but whatever this liquid is, uh, at the top of the, the liquid there is a bubble that gets formed. And that bubble has a curve to it. Whenever you read a graduated cylinder, and not just a graduated cylinder, lots of measuring devices will do this, uh, you need to read the very bottom of the meniscus, the, the curve that gets formed. This curve that you see here is called a meniscus. Uh, that just simply means the shape of a liquid at the surface. You read the very bottom of that curve, and when we say the bottom, the bottom of the bubble. Okay, a common mistake that students will make is they'll see this curve, and there's some thickness to it, you'll notice and they'll start to read the bottom of this curve here at the top of the bubble. That is not the part that you read. You read the very bottom of that bubble. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, I can see uh, that the very bottom of this meniscus is somewhere between 52 and 53 milliliters. Notice this is marked every whole milliliter. Here's 50, 51, 52, 53, etc., up to 60. And the very bottom of this is definitely below 53. So it's 52 point something. When I look at that, I say it's 8 tenths of the way between, so I say 52.8 milliliters. If you look at this and say 52.9 or 52.7, probably good measurement as well. 52.6, not so good. Uh, how I would tell if you were measuring the wrong part of the meniscus, if you recorded a measurement of something like uh, 54.2, if you look here at the top of the bubble, that's over 54, so if you'd say like 54.1, 54.2, that would tell me that you're not reading the very bottom of the meniscus. So make sure when you're using a graduated cylinder, you actually read the very bottom of that, of that bubble there.